You're listening to Transform Your Life from the Inside Out podcast. In this episode, I'm going to actually expand upon what I talked about in my podcast last week when I had my first guest ever, which was James Wedmore, and we talked about the ancient Incan concept of Aini, A-Y-N-I. Aini is the reciprocity of life. In my opinion, this is one of the most important concepts that we can master because in my experience, mastering Aini, which is a reciprocity of life, is quite literally the golden goose that laid the golden egg to get everything that you want in life. Keep listening. Hi, I'm Jim Fortin, and you're about to start transforming your life from the inside out with this podcast. I'm widely considered the leader in subconscious transformation, and I've coached super achievers all around the world for over 25 years. Here, you're going to find no rah-rah motivation and no hype, because this podcast is a combination of brain science, transformational psychology, and ancient wisdom all rolled into one to take your life to levels you've never thought possible. If you're wanting a lot more in life, to feel better, to heal, to have peace of mind, to feel powerful and alive, and to bring more abundance and prosperity into your life, then this podcast is for you because you're going to start learning how to master your mind and evolve your consciousness. And when you do that, anything you want then becomes possible for you. I'm glad you're here. All right, Aini, A-Y-N-I. And if you're like most people, this is probably the first time you've heard the word. Um, obviously, you can Google it, look it up, whatever you want. But obviously, this is something that I've learned. And when I say obvious, you know, maybe it's not obvious. But this is a life lesson that has been ingrained into me for many, many years by the shaman that I work with. And I'll talk about him in just a moment because he's the one who taught me this concept. And he started teaching me this many, many years ago. As a matter of fact, I remember it the very first time that I met him. Um, physically in person, he started demonstrating this concept. So Aini, as I said in the introduction, and you might remember from last week, Aini is ancient Incan for the reciprocity of life. Pretty simple what that means is what you put out, but there is a caveat. What you put out is what you get back. Now the caveat is this, and we'll talk a lot about, I'll you know talk a lot more about that in this episode. But a lot of people actually give, but they don't give to give, they give to get, which we talked about, you know, last week on the Wednesday episode of James. But the, the one thing, the, the magic elixir, the magic, you know, fairy dust or whatever that makes giving work is that we must give not to give, or to, I'm sorry, to get, we must give with an open heart because that makes all the difference in the world. When we give and we have some expectation that if I give something, somebody's gonna give me something back, that's not truly a gift. That's not truly giving. You're giving something to get something. But when we give and we have no attachment and we have an open heart, what, you know, when we give, wow, I challenge you and you know, I challenge you literally is to start working from that place and you're going to be amazed at what starts to happen in your life. So I mentioned my brother-in-law. Um, his name is Javier. I might have said it before. Um, I, call, I call him Don Javier. Don is a Spanish form of respect. And in 1996, when I started apprenticing with him, very, very quickly, he got me started on doing some work with him. And I didn't get started with it. And a couple of weeks later, he's like, hey, you know, I got you started with this. How come you haven't taken action with it yet? And what I said was, and, and by, this, by the way, at this point, I had already quit my corporate job. I was actually waiting tables at night. I was, uh, you know, doing NLP training and, and I was learning NLP during the day and worked at an NLP place and I wasn't making a lot of money. And he says, well, how come you haven't started the work that I got you set up on? And I remember this conversation so vividly. I said, well, I haven't started because I can't afford to give you any money right now. And he said, when did I ask you for money? And I said, well, you didn't ask me for any money, but you know, a lot of people that work with you or that you work with them, they gift you money, they tithe, they, you know, they give you a love offering. And he says, you know what? He goes, I never ask you for any money. And he said, it doesn't matter. Uh, that's what I'm on the planet to do is to serve. And I will get my compensations from the universe. 
And I always remember that conversation because I've always seen him live that way. And I have to admit, obviously me demonstrating, you know, how I was showing up and me telling you that story means I didn't even really grasp the concept. I wasn't living that way. And for many years, I, I lived what I call backwards. I lived that, you know what, I'm going to go out and do things in the world and I'm going to sell and I'm going to do this and coaching and training and all this kind of stuff. And when I do that, I'm going to get paid and I'm going to make money. I never really, truly started making really, really, really good money until I fully emotionally embraced the concept of Aini, which means, you know what? I'm on the planet to serve and whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to do, I'm going to do with an open heart and whatever my compensations are from that, those are my compensations. But you know what? I'm not going to worry about evening, evening the score or keeping score or who did what or where or why. I don't worry about any of that. I know I have a lot of people listening to this podcast that are in business and let me bring this to business as well. I have, um, she was at one point, uh, we've since grown apart for different reasons, nothing personal, any of that. But I had a woman that was a very, very, very good friend of mine. I, I she called me her best friend. And the only reason we haven't talked so much recently is she's 80 years old and she had some significant health issues a few years ago. And basically she decided that she needed, needed to, to live her life in a way that was good for where she was. I'm going to leave it at that. It doesn't matter. And it just is what it is. We are very, very close friends. I, I adore this woman. She is a Dallas business icon. As a matter of fact, I was you know thinking a couple of days ago, this is probably four or five days ago, that here in Texas, uh, the Texas billionaire H. Ross Perot, he passed over. And she was one of his best friends. I mean, she literally is a Dallas business icon. Anybody that's a power player in Dallas business knows who she is. Um, she's a real estate broker. NAR, the National Association of Realtors, has called her or named her one of the top 20 thought leaders in national real estate. And actually, I started doing training in her company. And we just became friends, very, very good friends, very quickly. And I remember one day, I, and I'm going to tell you the whole story here. But I was training in her company and I said, and well, let me, let me back up prior Saturday, prior to training at her company, she and I were grabbing some lunch and she said, what are you doing next week? And I said, I'm going, you know, I'm training at your company on Tuesday, then I'm going to go to a seminar event, uh, Tuesday afternoon. And she said, well, how much is, how much does it cost? And I said, 5,000. And that was really about it. We just chatted a bit more and we were done with that conversation. Tuesday, I trained at her company and she, when I would train, she'd always give me like a card and cookies and, you know, muffins. She'd always give me stuff. And she, uh, she gave me an envelope and said, here, just, this is for the, you know, for the airplane, for the ride later. I rushed to the airport, uh, rushed to the airport. I got on the airplane and there was this big, you know, an, um, envelope that had the, you know, the little butterfly clip on the back. And I opened it up and there was a card in there and some other stuff. And there was an, another envelope. And I said, do not open until you're five minutes in the flight. So I put it back in the flight. You know, I wait, waited until we took off and then I opened it. And there was a card in there, handwritten, and it said, thank you for raising the, the bar at my company and thank you for making a difference in my life. And she said a few more things, but she actually gave me a check for $6,500. And that was to cover the seminar that I was going to and all of my expenses. Now, mind you, I didn't need her to cover my expenses. I mean, I'd, I'd already paid for it the week prior. The thing is this, it wasn't even out of her business account, which she could have written it off as a consulting fee or whatever. It was out of her personal checking account. The reason I tell you this is I learned so much from this woman about Aini and the business world because I heard my brother-in-law talk about it and he demonstrated it, but I learned it from this woman. And she said to me one day, we were talking and she goes, you know, if I live to be a hundred years old, I will never recoup all the goodwill that I've created in the world. Now, her company is the second largest private real estate company in North Texas, and it's probably not now because actually she decided to close it all down and, and just get out of the business completely. But one of the largest real estate companies, and I think the largest private one in Texas, was called Ebby Halliday. And Ebby Halliday was a very, very well-known real estate figure, as was the lady that I'm mentioning. They were the two most well-known women in Dallas, DFW, North Texas real estate. And one day I was talking to my friend and she goes, you know, I want to take you over and introduce you to this woman that she gave me the name, but she goes, this person. And I said, well, who was that person? And she says, well, that person is the president of Ebby, you know, Ebby Halliday. And I said to her, I said, why, why would you take me over and introduce me to your competition so that I can do training over there? 
Now, as you're hearing this story, think about that. I mean, how many people hoard? You know, they, they hoard their resources or whatever they think in terms of competition, and I've got to beat my competition. And she's wanting to introduce me to the competition. And she said to me, she goes, look, our industry really needs what you do and who you are. And if you can make a lot of people's lives better, you can make the entire industry better. Notice, she wasn't thinking about herself. She wasn't thinking about her sales. She wasn't thinking about her company. She was thinking about how she could make the world and the industry a better place. I know I've mentioned before, maybe it's in this podcast, maybe oh, definitely other places, and especially in my coaching program. The very first day I had lunch with this lady, I'd ask her, you know, I said, how did you build your company so quickly? And I think I told it in the podcast and I'll say it again, but she didn't say, oh, I've, you know, I've got this national reputation and people know me and I'm, you know, I'm friends with H. Ross Perot and uh, marketing reports and analysis and name recognition. None of that. She said, oh, that's easy. Love, care, concern, and giving. And I have watched her live her life as a servant, as a giver. And there's so many people, especially I think the phrase came around back in, in the 90s, the, the phrase servant leadership. And so many people run around, blah, 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 blah. I want to be your mortgage broker for life. And I want to be your real estate agent for life and servant leadership, all this nonsense. And you know what? It sounds good. It, it does. It sounds good on paper, servant leader. But what I've noticed over the years, and when I coach people, it gets very personal. I mean, I get to know who they are at a, at a core level. And so many people want to be servant leaders, not because of being a servant leader and what they can do for other people. They want to be servant leaders because of what they can get. Because if they're a servant leader, oh, guess what? They can garner more business. A gentleman named Adam, um, Adam Grant wrote a book, and it's called... I don't know what it's called. It's been a lot of years. I forgot the title. Uh, but anyway, in his book, it might pop into my head in just a moment, but in this book, um, he actually, they've done research, I believe, and I, it's been a lot of years since I read the book, but he categorized selling professionals into three categories, into takers, matchers, and givers. And takers were obviously the people who take, 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 take. They're always taking. And we all know somebody like that. I don't think I've ever been like that, but I've definitely have been the next category, which is the matcher. And the matcher is, tell you what, you give me XYZ, I'll give you XYZ. You do ABC, I'll do ABC. And if you're not going to do it for me, I'm not going to do it for you. I'm going to draw a distinction a little later in this episode about how to set up boundaries so that you still work as a servant, but you're not being taken advantage of uh, by the takers. So, and then the giver, which this woman that I'm talking about is the giver is that she's always giving, she's always there to help, she's always there to serve. Now, let me draw a little bit of a boundary here. When I say that, she at one point at her company here in Dallas, she had 700 real estate agents. Um, I believe the number is 700. And even if a first year, first week agent came, came to her and said, you know what, I've got to go on my first listing presentation, will you go with me? Yep, I've seen her do it. She would get in the car and she would go on a listing presentation with a brand new agent. I mean, she was constantly there, constantly to serve her people. One morning I spoke at an event, um, and I don't speak at events anymore. It was early morning, which I don't do mornings. I'm not a morning person. I spoke at an event. It was like seven o'clock in the morning. And it was, for, it was for one of her agents and it was downtown. And she was there. And I said, what are you doing here? And we were really good friends, so I could say it in that way. And she goes, well, I'm here to support Jeff. And I thought, wow, this woman runs this company, seven offices. I mean, she travels all over the world for real estate, all this stuff, national name. I mean, she was the president of TAR at one point, Texas Association of Realtors. Very, 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 very busy woman. And she comes to support one of her agents. She does that from the heart. And I don't know if you can gather by this point, but this woman is extraordinary. And when she leaves the planet, it's going to be a loss. Why? Because this woman serves with an open heart. She told me once, she goes, it doesn't matter to me how high that I have been in life. What matters, and I know I've said this in the, in the podcast before, but what matters is how many people that I can take with me. Um, I'll, I'll talk about boundaries in a minute when I started talking about her. And, and you might be wondering, well, why am I not mentioning her name? Because the interesting thing about her is 
as powerful and as influential as she is, and she's been the Dallas Businesswoman of the Year, I don't know how many times, and she's an extremely private woman. I mean, extraordinarily, extraordinarily private. You will find nothing about her private life online. And if you even Google her name, you're going to find her company name, and that is it. She is extremely private. And so I, I, want, to, you know, I want to respect that. But when I say boundaries, she'll help anyone. She will help anyone anywhere. And I've seen her do it at any company, at any place. I've seen her do it in restaurants. I've seen her do it, oh my gosh, at so many places. But she sets boundaries in that if somebody doesn't value the help, then she's not going to help them because she's not going to waste her energy. So let's go back to giving here. And I want to ask you a question. So let's say that, you know, Susan and John Smith, um, part of their, you know, people do this, part of their charitable trust is they're going to build a wing at a hospital and they want the wing called the Susan and John Smith cancer and oncology wing or whatever. Do you think that's giving to give or do you think that's giving to get? Now, no judgments on on my part because we're going to do what we do as human beings. But my thinking is that is giving to get because they are going to get their name on a wing of a hospital and that is recognition. My brother-in-law, Don Javier, and I were talking one day. We were just sitting down on the back porch. We were in Colorado on summer vacation. And he says, you know, true humbleness is to give. And no one knows that you gave. He says, because, you know, you can't hide from the universe. You can't hide. So when you give with an open heart, the universe is going to balance that back at some point. And if you don't give and you don't blow all the whistles and put your name up in lights and you just give silently, but with an open heart, that is true humbleness. You know, I had a client of mine and I don't know, maybe you will, maybe you you won't fit in this category. Maybe you resonate client of mine. When I used to, I used to do a lot of heavy coaching in the real estate industry and he was the top, he was the number one agent in his office. And we were talking about this concept years ago, and I actually dropped him as a client after this conversation because I couldn't help him anymore. Um, I was talking to him that my interpretation and coaching him was my interpretation is that his business was all about building himself and all about what he could get, but it wasn't about true heart-based service. And I talked to him a few times about it and it just wasn't registering, but he was frustrated because he couldn't grow his revenue. He couldn't grow, you know, it it just, he wasn't growing and he was doing really well, but I mean, upper seven figures, but he just couldn't get to the million dollar mark. And it dawned on me that he doesn't have the heart of somebody like an agent that would have people just, you know, raving about him, even though he was like mechanically, he was very, very, very good at what he did, but emotionally and from the heart, He was sealed off. And he said to me, he said, you know what, Jim? He goes, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to take care of my family. He has two, uh, two kids. He goes, I'm going to take care of my family. And when I've taken care of my family first, then I will help other people. And I'm sharing with you, if that resonates with you, he was, and he's still, still actually at that same place, pretty much economically, he's working backwards. And if you're working from that place, you are working backwards. Many years ago, when I lived in New York City, I had a client who wanted me to teach him uh, some advanced, uh, some I'll put it this way, some advanced influence. And his name was Raphael. He was a Venezuelan oil man. He and his wife were very, very wealthy. Um, His office is at Rockefeller Center. He and his wife owned the whole floor of their apartment building on Park Avenue. We got to know each other, and out of the blue, he says, "Jim, put together a business. Uh, Any any business you want to put together, I'm going to fund it for you. I'm going to back it for you." And there was more conversation around it, but we got along really well. And, and I said, why would you do this? And he said to me, he says, you know what? He goes, when I help you and I help you expand, I help myself. And most of us don't look at it that way. And I, guys, I have been there in that I was the person that would say, well, let me go out and let me, you know, let me do all my stuff and let me take care of myself first. And then exhale. Whew, you know, once I've taken care of myself and I'm secure, oh, then I've got the money and the security to go out and the time and everything else to go out and help other people. I don't think that way anymore because you heard me mention maybe in a recent podcast is that I'm on the planet for two reasons. I'm here to evolve and grow myself and I'm here to serve others. I'm here to serve you. And if you look at the podcast, that needs no defense. I get messages every day from people saying, my God, I've I've changed my life listening to your podcast. 
And here's the thing, when I started this, it wasn't to to start a podcast and it wasn't about information because we are in a world uh, that's just drowning in information. My intention was not information in this podcast, it's transformation. So Aini, A-Y-N-I, I don't know how to say the word correctly. I don't know if it's Amish or Amish, but you know what I mean, A-M-I-S-H. They have what's called uh, barn building is tell you what, when I build a barn, the community comes and they build my barn. When you need your barn built, the community comes and they build your barn. And that's the way that I look at life is that unlike this real estate agent who said, you know what, I'm going to take care of myself first and then I'll take care of everyone else. That's a dead end. That is a broken strategy because the way that I look at it is the more that I invest my time and my energy and my expertise into other people, Literally, let's just be transparent here. Um, many, many people are lining up for my transformational program. The next one opens up in a few months. But you know what? You've seen me in this podcast demonstrate and demonstrate over and over. And I know that the more that I build your life with asking for nothing in return, the more you're going to want to work with me. But I want to be very clear also. I'm doing what I do in this podcast, not entirely for marketing. I'm doing it because this is what I'm on the planet to do. And I know that when I invest in you, however I invest in you, you're going to invest in me just to make sure that we're, uh, we're on the same page here uh, because some people could misinterpret that. Also, I do not let people into my coaching programs free, which I've already tried that marketing model and it's broken. I tried a marketing model a couple of years back where I said, tell you what, go through the entire transformational program, pay me when you're done. I had a very low attendance rate. Why? Because people had no skin in the game. So I want to be very, very clear about that. But the way that I work is I'm a bridge. Use me, use me as a bridge and every, all the information that I can bring you and every bit of content that I can bring you, use it as a bridge to build your life. If you get back to me, great. If you don't, great, because guess what? I'm creating the karma and the goodwill by helping you and you're going to go out in the world and help more people and all that energy just comes right back to me. So as I said, please, please, um, please get this. And when you really, when you have the aha and you have the knowing that light bulb, you know, light bulb goes off and you're like, wow, I really get it is when Florence Scovel Shin, I've mentioned her work before. It's about a hundred years old. You can find it on Amazon for like $5. And in my interpretation, I know that I've, I've mentioned her before. She talks a lot about this, but she uses the word God. If that doesn't resonate with you, which you guys never hear me use that word, um, use divine force, quantum field, the great grand mystery, uh, spirit, divine force, whatever you want, uh, because there is a, 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 a consciousness, there is a force in the universe. But in her book, when she, when she says that one line was just captivating to me, and this man that I, I mentioned, Raphael, had demonstrated this, and as this woman has, and my brother-in-law has, is when you invest in other people, you're literally, because see, we live in a universe of flow and cycle, you're investing in yourself. Now, as far as myself, I tithe and I actually, I'm trying to think of the right words here because I haven't thought through it in the way that I want to share it with you, but I'm I'm going to just use the word tithe. I tithe 10% of every penny that comes into my life. And I do it with an absolute open heart with gratitude. As a matter of fact, notice what I said with gratitude. I'm grateful to be able to tithe. And the more gratitude and the more that I tithe and the more that I give with an open heart, the more money like a fire hose, I mean, just comes flowing right back into my life. So as I said a bit earlier, don't take my word for it. Start working from this place. And you know what? It could be a dollar, literally, but give the dollar with an open heart. Or it could be giving somebody cookies or something, do something to help other people create expansion in their life. I'm not going to talk too much about it in this episode, but I want to share a couple of more thoughts here. Number one is relationships is I'm going to tell you how most of us work. Most of us actually want what we want in the way that we want it. And if I said at one point in my life, I wasn't that way, I would be lying is that think about that. You pretty much want in your relationship, what you wanted in the way that you want it. Now, here's the thing is if you don't get what you want in the way that you want, you know, you want it, then what a lot of people start doing is they start pouting or whatever. But there's something that I have on my refrigerator at home. 
And I just found it online a lot of years ago, and I would love to give the credit to whoever wrote this. I just don't know anymore. But it was, it was a therapist. And there's, I don't know, I can't even, there's relationship saving advice. And she had 10 tips for a happy relationship. And those 10 tips are just, to me, priceless. But one of the tips was, and this applies to Ine. Are you ready? One of the tips is to give first what you want. And I've worked backwards and I'm asking you, look at your own personal life. Do you want before you give? Um, whatever your love language is. Let's say your love language is physical. Do you want physical? And let's say that your partner's is um, time, you know, quality time. Well, do you want the physical before you give the quality time? And being, as I said, just being transparent with you guys, I think this used to be one of my biggest limitations in relationship is wanting to get before I would give. And if you want to watch your life take off, providing, providing you are with, uh, I'm going to use air quote, the right person, start giving first and watch what happens. It's shocking what happens when we give first. Okay. So I wanted to share that. And then two more things here about giving. This is what I know also is I used to give and give and give and give because I am a giver. And, and even though, despite what I said earlier, I mean, I love helping people that gives me a, a great deal of joy. And I used to give away things for free, a lot of it for free. And something that I learned from my brother-in-law, he once said to me, he goes, you can't do that. N not in the way that you're doing it. He goes, life is like an ATM machine. And if you keep taking money out, but you don't put any money in very quickly, you go to your ATM and you have no money. And that's the way that I used to live as let me give and give and give and give. I don't do that anymore. Is that when I give, I mean, I give from the heart, no question. And I, I give without expectation, but there are times when I give even the friends and family that I request reciprocity and I don't mean money, but you know what? I'll write this sales copy for you. Or I will help you with this or I will help you with that. But you know what? Um, take me to a nice dinner. And that, that didn't come out right in the way that I said it, but I think you get the point. And because I used to have a good friend of mine, very good friend of mine that used to take advantage of my expertise. I mean, if I were to look at anything for you, I wouldn't look at it for any, anything less than a couple of thousand bucks an hour, um, copy or headlines or marketing or anything, or even transformational stuff. And he used to always ask me to do stuff for him. And I did, and he never appreciated it, never even used it after I did it for him. And he would ask me over and over and I would do it. And one day I said, you know what? I'm, I'm not doing it anymore. If you want to pay me, I'm not going to charge you my full fee, but I am not doing this for you anymore because you know what? You don't appreciate what I do and it's a waste of my time and I can be helping someone, someone else. And since that time, he's never asked me to do any, you know, copy or sales ads or anything for him since that time. And even today, I want to wrap this up here, but even today we were having lunch and he's like, well, tell me how to make more money. And I haven't shared this story with anybody. We were in the parking lot. We were walking out of lunch. We we're in the parking lot. And I remember when we were, we were having lunch, he opened his wallet and he probably had about 500 bucks in cash. I mean, I know he, because he pulled it out. He had like five $100 bills. I've known him for a lot of years. I mean, 30 years. So it's not like anything private that I'd know what's in his wallet. I mean, we, we were roommates back in our twenties. And we were in the parking lot talking and I don't, I don't carry cash. I, I didn't have any cash on me. And this guy came up to us. He wasn't really panhandling, but he was, he was just out of the hospital and you could, I mean, literally you could tell he was just out of the hospital. And, and he said, you know, I really need some help buying some medication. And I'm like, you know, I would help. I told the guy, I'm like, I would help you, but I don't have an, I have, I don't have a penny on me. I, I, I can't help you right now because whatever money I would have had on me, I would have given to him. My friend, he looked at my friend and my friend said, I don't have any money. And the guy turned away and left, said, thank you. And, and he left. My friend had 500 bucks in his wallet. Had that been me, I would have given that guy the $500. And that's not me making something up melodramatic or talking some BS or any of that. I would have given the guy the 500. Why? Because I would have given it with an open heart to serve someone else. And I know the universe at some point and somewhere and sometime is going to bring that back to me. And so the comment was, is my friend, um, we had, you know, we had lunch a couple of weeks ago and he's like, I just not making money like I want to. And I didn't tell him what I'm telling you guys, uh, because he really wouldn't be open to it, but he doesn't recognize that he doesn't bring the money into his life and it doesn't flow because since I've known him, he hoards his money and life is a cycle like the ATM. You've got to put money in to take money out. And it's like a water hose. You know, I mean, you've got, if you kink the water hose, the money doesn't flow. Well, my friend doesn't let the money flow out. And then he wonders why it doesn't come back in. 
Okay, your transformational takeaway. I'm not even sure you need one in this episode, but your transformational takeaway, let's keep it really simple. I suggest your takeaway be that what you give with an open heart is what returns to you. Thank you for listening to this entire podcast. If you're the kind of person who likes to help others, then share this with your friends and family. You know, if you found value, they will too. So please share via your social media channels. Also, if you have questions, I'm here to assist. You can email me questions to support at jimforton.com and I may even use your question for a future podcast episode. Also, if you want transformational content like this daily, connect with me on Instagram. My Instagram name is I am Jim Fortin. Finally, I do have a personal request. I believe that we're all here to help others and to grow and evolve ourselves. Together, you and I, let's help more people. If you would, please leave a review on iTunes and a good one, by the way, (laughs) I'd be grateful. And through your assistance together, we can transform more lives. Thanks for listening.